Welcome back to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health Program. Today I'm talking with Dr. Basha about asthma. Dr. Basha, before the break you talked about um, a procedure called bronchiothermoplasty. Can you tell us how this procedure works? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the patients are taken to the operating room and uh, they're given a general anesthetic. And then we insert uh, the bronchoscope through the endotracheal tube, which is in their lung. And then through that bronchoscope, we insert a special catheter. This is the, he the heated catheter. And we work in different sections of the lung. We start off working the right lower lobe, and uh, we do many, many different treatments to that portion of the lung. Typically, some, somewhere between 75 to 90 different heat treatments to just, just to the right lower lobe. And these treatments are done five millimeters apart, and we work our way in different sections of the lung, distance, different segments of the lung, until we're done. The whole procedure uh, f uh, for each time we do it takes somewhere between 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, the patients are then recovered and they go home the same day. Now it's a little bit scary to hear about um, heat going into your lungs. Uh, can you tell us what the patient might experience throughout this procedure? Well obviously the patient is not going to experience anything during the procedure because they're, they're under general anesthetic. Uh, the heat that we apply to the bronchial air tubes which help to eliminate or destroy some of that smooth muscle I talked about earlier is no hotter than really a, a, a typical cup of coffee. So the patients do well during the procedure. Sometimes after the procedure, the patients may notice that they may have a bit of a cough or maybe a bit of a wheeze or mild shortness of breath or maybe their asthma feels like it's a bit more active for a day or two after the procedure, but uh, none of the patients have really had any major problems with this procedure afterwards. Are there any known risks or complications associated with the procedure? As I just mentioned, sometimes the patients will have a mild flare-up of their asthma after the procedure. It usually only lasts a few hours or maybe a day or two. None of the patients have had to be treated for this or none of the patients have had to be admitted to the hospital for this. It's a very, very mild sort of thing that they develop afterwards and uh, that most of it just goes away on its own. Now you talked earlier about there being a decrease in the symptoms and fewer trips to the emergency room after the procedure. What are some of the other benefits associated with Well, it? some of the other benefits relate to the fact that uh, the patients can reduce a lot of their medications. Again, we're doing this procedure on patients with severe persistent asthma. Again, as I mentioned earlier, these are patients who are on a lot of different medications and they're on all these medications all the time. So, if, so after the procedure, typically four to six to eight weeks after the procedure, after we've done all three treatments, uh, patients will notice a significant improvement. Uh, they can start reducing their medication, some of their inhalers. Some patients have come off medications completely. Uh, many other patients will experience a significant decline in their flare-ups or exacerbations, less trip to the ER, as you mentioned, less admissions to the hospital, and the less, the less use of other uh, asthma medications. So if I'm a patient, I'm having problems with my asthma, it seems to be getting worse. Is this something that I should approach my doctor about or should I, I wait for him to offer it to me? How, uh, can you talk again about who is um, most suitable for this procedure? Again, we sort of want to deal with patients who have more uh, severe persistent asthma. So these are patients who have severe disease. They have asthma all the time. They're on a lot of different medications. And these are patients typically who find themselves, unfortunately, in the emergency room or in the hospital frequently. These are patients who have poor control of their disease. They often have nocturnal symptoms. Their exercise is impeded. And oftentimes they'll miss school days or work days. Is there anybody who is not eligible for this procedure? Well, we wouldn't want to do this on patients who have more mild disease. So patients with mild intermittent asthma or moderate intermittent asthma or just mild or moderate asthma, even if it's persistent, these are patients who we typically would not perform this procedure on. So we're looking or focusing primarily on patients who have persistent disease, year-round disease, who we, we might define as having severe disease. Dr. Basha, this has been excellent information. Do you have any closing comments for our viewers? Well, as I've mentioned many times on this show, uh, the key here is getting a proper uh, diagnosis. And once we have a proper diagnosis of asthma, staging the disease as being either mild, moderate, severe, intermittent, persistent. And then based on the severity of the disease, deciding what kind of treatments to offer the patients. And in those patients who have severe persistent asthma, uh, considering something like bronchial thermoplasty, which is really uh, becoming the state of the art as it relates to asthma treatments for severe disease. Dr. Basha, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. If you have questions, need a physician referral, or have suggestions for topics you'd like to hear more about, you can contact us by calling Health Access 
at 1-800-228-1484. You can also watch Today's Health, request a copy of our program, and access other reliable health care information by visiting our website. As always, tune in next time to Today's Health. Today's Health is brought to you by McLaren Port Huron, a leader in healing, your partner in health.